Today I'm feeling rather smug and rather happy with myself because finally I've managed to get my hands on the new 2021 Aprilia Tuono V4 Factory. This bike has been updated for 2021. No longer does it have the dated front end. It's got the new Aprilia front end, very similar to what's on the Tuono 660. I think it's actually exactly the same headlights. Um, engine, it's been some tweaks, nothing major happened to the engine, but she's all been revised. The, the biggest changes is the styling and the electronics have been thoroughly overhauled. Because this is the factory version, it has all the electronic EC2 suspension, all of that lovely stuff. So today we're going to take this for a bit of a first ride. This bike is brand new. This bike has 20 miles on the clock, so I've got to take it a little bit easy on this one. I've promised wheels motorcycles I'm going to be careful until we've got a few more miles on it. But join me for a first little spin of the brand new, a uh, literally brand new Aprilia Tuono V4 factory. I'm really rather excited about this. So before we get into it, I've got to say a humongous thank you to Wheels Motorcycles. Links below, go and check them out. This is their demonstrator. So this has just come in, their demo, trusting me with this bike with 16, I think that's 16 miles on the clock actually. Um, yeah, it is literally brand new, just been PDI'd and on the road. So I'm going to do a couple of videos on this bike. This is going to be a first ride. First impressions, obviously I can't give it the full beans. I'm going to take a little bit careful, but we can test out everything else about the bike. Oh, yes, it's nice, it's nice. Power her up. New TFT for this year, bit bigger, different layout, very similar to the RS660 layout. Right, let's power her up. Different start buttons, different switch gear completely than last year's. That sounds racy. Mirror, signal, lifesaver, pull away. If you're a subscriber and you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've just been on the launch of the new S1000R. I've also just been on the launch of the new GSX S1000. So I've just tried last week both of those new naked offerings. So it's very interesting to try the daddy. You know, what, what is considered to be by many the ultimate super naked i mean this bike has a reputation this bike has been more or less unchanged since 2017 they had a bit of an overhaul in 2017 where they added a quick shift and a blipper you know and improved the styling but it didn't really change much you know it was only a, a little update and it hasn't really been touched since 2017 so a bit of an update was long overdue i mean this bike used to still have halogen headlights for heaven's sake but as many would say if it ain't broke don't fix it because there was certainly not a lot wrong with the last year's Tuono. Oh! So for 2021, really, they've concentrated on the things the bike was really missing. The styling, you know, the styling has been completely overhauled. It's now got a really modern look, just as well, because that's probably going to have to last for the next 10 years <laughs> until they update it again. But it's, you know, it's overhauled. It looks good. I really do like the styling of this bike now. When I first saw the pictures I wasn't sure but I, I, it's really grown on me. After living with the RS660 and the 660 Tuono, thanks at the top there, I like this new look, I like this new headlights, I think it looks great. The engine hasn't really been touched, I think it's just been tinkered for Euro 5 but that's about it, no more power, I think it's 175 brake horsepower which let's be honest for a naked on the road is more than enough and around about 120 newton meters of torque. I think it revs a little bit higher, so it delivers that peak power a little bit further up the rev range, probably for Euro 5 again, but it doesn't actually make any more power. Oh, it's got some pull. It starts to kick in. <laughs> Take it easy, chops. We've got to put at least 100 miles on this bike before we start giving it any, uh, any of the old uh, <coughs> welly. Oh, 
Oh God, it builds speed so, so quickly. This is one of those bikes whereby I've nearly bought one of these several times before. Me having this bike for a week is actually quite dangerous. <laughs> this and the Super Duke are the two nakeds which I could really see myself owning. And uh, I nearly, when I bought the Super Duke last year, the new Gen 3 Super Duke, I had to, I nearly ended up buying it. I had to say, no, you haven't got room for more motorcycles. And I resisted. This is gonna be one of those bikes whereby <laughs> I'll be wishing I had a spare 18,000 pounds. The electronics have been overhauled. So the electronics have been brought up to date, the same as the RSV4, the electronics were look as as dated as the uh, as the looks really you know they they've been a while since they were overhauled 2017 they've updated them new bosch imu you know all that latest electronic goodies to to handle that power and to keep it all in check i've just been flicking through the modes it seems there's three main rider modes a tour mode which seems to be slightly softer throttle response a sport mode with slightly more aggressive throttle response and then a user mode where I guess you can fully customise it and I see in the user mode the wheelie control is turned off. Good old wheels, they know what I like. The riding position, your feet are actually quite high up, you know they're very, quite a sporty feet position for a naked, it, I'd say the pegs are higher than the S1000R and the GSX-S, well no surprise on the GSX-S because that's more of a road bike but the pegs are higher than the S1000R the bars are a little bit nearer to you than the S1000R. You've got a bit more weight on the wrists with the, rest, with the S1000R and also with the Super Duke, you've got a bit more weight on your wrists. They're sort of a bit closer to you on this. Similar sort of bar position to the GSX-S actually, but with your legs a little bit, your feet a little bit further back and a little bit, fur, a little bit higher up. The seat feels nice, lots of padding, quite wide. You know, you can move around in this seat nicely. A beautiful sculpted tank to get your knees behind. But, you know, pretty comfortable. Like I say, the worst thing about the Ergos is, the, is your knees and where your feet are. So I think anything over an hour on the bike, you're going to be giving it all this, trying to stretch your legs out. Quite a lot of engine braking. I can tell straight away, the engine braking is all adjustable. You can go in and adjust engine braking and all that stuff. I have a good play around with the menus, but probably not until I familiarise myself with it on the next video. Oh, it just, oh! 6,000 revs, it kicks. It's like a two-stroke. <laughs> it kicks in. For this year, the whole exhaust system has been changed. If you remember last year, the RSV4 had the Akropovich, the factory RSV4 had the Akropovich on its standard, and it had this valve in it whereby at low RPMs the valve would be closed and the bike would be very quiet. You took the bike over as 4,000 revs and then the valve opened and all the noise is unleashed. I think this is exactly the same. Aprilia have taken that Akropovich system and done their own version of it for 2021. And it's the same on the RSV4. There's no Akropovich now on the factory RSV4. They've got the uh, Aprilia's own system, which looks a lot better than the old standard system, but not as nice as the Akropovich, obviously. But sound-wise, it's still got a beautiful V4 noise. The highlight of this bike is without doubt, it, it always has been, it's been that V4 motor. It's an absolute peach. I mean, it's, it is the best sounding motorcycle, production motorcycle in the world. I'm having no arguments there. The RS V4 sounds a little bit better because it's a little bit more racy sounding at the top because it revs a bit higher but the Tuono comes in a close second to the RSV4. It sounds incredible, and even just poodling around below sort of 6,000 revs, oh, that noise, that, that it's intoxicating. It makes you want to open it up all the time. Oh, this bike could really be a license loser. Ooh. Brakes are the Stylemas, I believe. Are they Stylemas or are they M50s? That's a good question. I can't see them. I think they're the M50s. M50 calipers, whereas the RC4 has Stylemas, but there's nothing wrong with these M50s. They're maybe not quite as sharp as last year's bike. The last year's was really quite a sharp brake 
it's, it's fine but maybe not quite as abrupt as last year still absolutely fine that's just down to the pad composition I mean I've got an H2 and I've changed my pads recently because the brakes weren't sharp enough on that for me these are perfectly fine actually perfectly fine but perhaps not quite as sharp as last year's bike they've obviously changed the pad material oh I'm just gonna ride around doing that all the time oh Suspension, as I mentioned, is the Olin's EC2 system, which is fully electronic. I've just had a little play around, actually, and I've got this in the... Let's just check what I got it in. I think I've got to work out how to use this yet. I don't, I don't really know. Um, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I say, I've literally just stepped on this. But I've set the suspension, I believe, in the comfortable setting. So the A1 setting, which is the automatic for road, and I can tell, actually, it's pretty forgiving. I've complained in the past about this uh, electronic Olins being, you know, sport. It's either sporty, really sporty, or really, really sporty. And this is in the comfortable setting. Actually, maybe they've improved it because that doesn't seem to... It's still firm, but it's not an absolute bone shake. Oh, ho, 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 ho. The bike isn't massively light, I mean it's, it's a 210 kilo bike, fully fuelled, so it's not the lightest of the Super Nakeds. Now the S1000R is considerably lighter, a good 10 kilos lighter if not more. So it's not, it's not the, uh, the lightest of the Super Nakeds. And you can feel that actually, it, it changing direction a little bit, it, feel, it does feel heavier to ride than the S1000R did, the new one I'm talking about. So it's, it's not the lightest, it's not the most powerful anymore at 175 horsepower, but obviously that is, uh, and I still that's 10 horsepower more than the S1000R and the same sort of power as the Super Duke. It's only really missing out on top end power than the, uh, the Street Fighter. The Ducati Street Fighter has more power, so, but <laughs> 175 horsepower, please, it's more than enough. After getting off two straight fours, I can tell you the bottom end on this bike is not as smooth as a straight four. I think the, this, this V4 engine sits in the middle of a, a V-twin and a, a straight four for smoothness at the bottom end. Oh, I nearly went for that. It's, uh, you know, when you're, I'm in, I'm in tour mode, which you would think is the comfortable street mode. You know, it, you can go right down on the revs, you can go right down on the revs and it doesn't complain like a V-twin would. But it is a little bit, there's a little bit of transition as you go slowly on and off the throttle at slow speed. So it's not straight four smooth, but it's much more nicer at the bottom than the V-twin. It's somewhere in the middle. And it's, it's still got that little bit of lash, a little bit of transmission lash or chain lash as you go on and off the throttle. You probably won't be able to hear it, it's, it's, it's like on or off. There's a little bit of on or off feeling to the throttle response when you lower down the rev range. I've got to get past this cut now because I have some twisties coming up. Bye bye. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of lever pressure to change direction. The front end feels very precise very well planted a good you know a real solid stable feeling front end but direction changes it's not the quickest but then you get that bloody power bloody power when you go on the throw and this is in the bloody tour mode this is not even in the uh, sport mode yeah, it picks up speed uh, an alarming rate also new for the 2021 model you're not going to believe this you're not going to believe this but the tuono now has a fuel gauge it's got a fuel gauge it's about time they put a fuel gauge on this bike because this was one of those bikes where my, my wombles got one of these wombles got a 2017 as uh, regular viewers will know and he's run out of fuel on that bike about four times <laughs> because when the fuel light came on 
you had about 20 miles to find a petrol station, literally 20 miles before you ran out of fuel. So having a fuel gauge is absolutely necessary on this bike. And it'll be interesting to see if they've changed how much you have in reserve, but it doesn't really matter now. You've got a fuel gauge, so you can keep your eye on it. The Italians are slowly catching on to things like fuel gauges. It's about bloody time. Let's take it up my favourite little hill climb, gently, because as I say, the tyres are still being bedded in. I'm just going to wait for that little mini to get away a little bit. Hang on, I'm going to go to uh, sport mode. Let's have a bit of sport mode. You can do that on the fly without even closing the throttle or anything, so that's quite nice. Let's do a little bit careful today because we have brand new Super Corsa rubber. Listen to it. Yeah, it feels nice. Just change out. We don't want to rev it too much. It feels like an absolute beast of a bike. Absolute beast of the bike. That that engine dominates everything. It's a bit like the Super Duke from that respect. That engine, that noise, that throttle response dominates. <laughs> it's. A, it's an incredible, incredible road bike. It hasn't lost anything from the, from that little, you know, just a, it feels, it feels very, very similar. I'm not sure they've changed a great deal. I think that electronic suspension seems to be better. That seems to be an improvement on the old one. Uh, you still can't seem to change it on the fly though, which is a bit of a shame. Why can't you change the electronic suspension settings on the fly? You can do it on the BMWs, why can't you do it on this? So that's a bit of a shame, but uh, oh, it's a lovely, lovely bit of kit, this. <laughs> oh, oh. Loads and loads of go, mid-range go. The mid-range pull on this engine is, is really impressive. I think it's almost got the same amount of shove as the Super Duke. I think it has. So I will have a good play around with all the menus and I'll give you my verdict on this. What I do like, what I do like about the Tuono and the RSV4 is these little buttons here for to increase and decrease the amount of traction control. Two little buttons on the switch gear here. They're really good. A very, very good idea. Pop that, bang, bang, bang. Traction control up and down as you want it. Very good. And you can also have that to do other things like wheelie control or whatever but it's just really useful to change and bang the traction up and down on the fly. What I noticed, you know, very low revs, quick shift and blipper can be a little bit clunky. I mean, I'm being ultra critical here. I'm comparing this to the likes of the S1000R, which is very, very smooth. So it is a little bit more, it goes in nicely, then it sort of lunges a little bit. But this bike has got, you know, the miles are so low on this, that could improve the few more miles on it. So I'm not going to uh, be too overcritical at this point. Suspension, well, I've got it in the, uh, the A3 now. I, it, I'm going to go back to the other one to see if I can tell much difference. We're going to perform an illegal manoeuvre here. Steering lock is a little bit limited on it. It always was on the old bike, it's still not any better. Oh. The wheel coming up and you're just riding it normally. I'm looking forward to when it's run in, or not, I'm not going to run it in completely, but once I've got uh, 200 or so miles on it, how does that, because that, that was, as I say, the electronics is what's updated on this bike, and the old electronics are a little bit archaic, you know, they'd, they'd come in a lot when on the more modern systems they wouldn't be cutting in, and they'd be quite aggressive at cutting the wheelie control and stuff so i'm really interested to see how how much better the wheelie control works on this bike compared to the old one so that will come in the next video so if you're not already subscribed you better click that button or you're going to miss out on my second ride on this bike where we give it a bit more wellington so uh, yeah if you're not subscribed click the button you won't miss anything let's have a little tickle around the faster corners see if it's still got it yeah, very stable, very stable, very nice. I want to change that suspension again now, but I don't want to stop to do it. I mean, that's just crazy talk. Why can't I adjust the suspension on the fly? Maybe T1, T1, T2, 
it's not very intuitive all of this I have to say it's, it's not particularly intuitive on all the menus you know I think it's gonna take a little while to get used to find out how you're gonna work it it's a little bit more complicated to use I think than uh, perhaps some of the other models on the blipper give it a little tickle in Yeah, it's uh, in this setting when the tyres are not scrubbed in, so it's not going to help, but it feels a little bit heavy. It transitions a bit of weight, a bit more than the S1000R. The S1000R was up so much more precise, perhaps, than this, and obviously it's a bit lighter, so I need to play around with the suspension settings because... I think because the power is so aggressive as well, whereas the S1000R was so smooth. So you, it's a bit like the RS34, and I've said this before when we've done our comparison reviews with Greg, that this engine is so raucous, you've got to, you know, you've got to be very, very, you've got to feather the throttle a little bit, you know? You can't be aggressive with it. You're aggressive with it, and it, it's shifting its weight about, and it's unsettling the bike, so, you have to really finesse one of these, I think. I am in sport mode, maybe they use a mode. I need to play around with the, I think you can go into the menu and you can use the user mode and I can set my throttle response, I can set my engine braking and get it exactly how I want it. But out the crate, I'm being a bit ham-fisted with the throttle, I think. So you've got to finesse this machine. Big old ham-fisted idiot. Oh, you can change it on the fly. I tell a lie, I found out how you do it you can adjust the suspension on the fly so ignore all that moaning i can do it so that is on level one now a1 it was on a3 and of course you can then go in and you can adjust everything independently so this is just like the base settings you can then go in and fully customize it so there's plenty of adjustability there to get it exactly how you want it well there we go guys, thanks for watching. I think that's about it. First ride, that's about all we can do with this bike till I get a few more miles on it. I'll get those miles done. Next time we go out, we'll give it a little sneaky, sneaky, uh, sneaky uh, ragging. No, not really wheels, motorcycles, we would never do that. But we'd take it a little bit more, put a little bit more power into it, start to build up the revs. So uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of things coming. I've got the Speed Triple RS is also coming next week. I've got the S1000 Double R. I'm doing the California Superbike School next week. I've got this for a week. It's all too much. <laughs> There's just so much cool stuff happening. You'd be a fool not to subscribe and come along for the ride. But thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. This is Power Level 1 which is full power. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Never mind get beard up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,